So I don't really enjoy reviewing chargers and cables because it really creates quite a big mess on my desk and in my environment. And this is a wireless audio file channel, but you can't run away from cables because you do have to keep your electronic devices charged up. So today let's talk about PD 3.1. Now PD 3.1 is a charging standard protocol which has been ratified in the year 2021. So that's a good two years ago. So what is PD 3.1? As opposed to PD 3.0, PD 3.1 gives out up to 48 volts of charging current from your charger. So I have here, this is a U-Green um, line of charger, which is the, under the next sort line of charger. This is 140 watts of charging power. It is PD 3.1 compatible. Now, PD 3.0 is actually supporting up to only 100 watts of power, and it maxes out at 20 volts of output sending 5 amps down the line. So you multiply that out, it gives you 100 watts of power. Now, do I have any devices that charges or requires charging beyond 100 watts? Yes, I do. And this is the MacBook Pro 16 inch right here. Now the MacBook Pro 16 inch comes uh, with shipped with a charger from Apple. And this is a 140 watts 3.1 charger with a single USB-C port. Does it charge up to 140 watts? Yes, but you do not. You cannot use a USB-C connection to USB-C port on the MacBook Pro and expect to get more than 100 watts because it tops out at 100 watts. But the USB-C cable that comes coupled with the charger right here from Nexode is actually capable of pushing up to 240 watts of power. Okay, so why don't we test it out and let's connect it up and see whether it charges the MacBook Pro better than the Apple charger. So here we go. We have a uh, power meter here. This is the uh, Maker Hawk, okay? Now there are three ports on this charger. I'll talk about the ports power distribution later, but you have to take note that the only way that it's gonna supply 140 watts of power is through the first port, or rather the USB-C port that is furthest away from the USB-A port. There's one A port and two C ports. So I'm gonna plug it in. Plug one end of the USB-C cable into this and plug the other end into the MacBook Pro. The MacBook Pro is actually pretty hungry for power right now. It is at about 70% battery. Okay, so it should demand quite a bit of power. Let's look at it. It's putting out 19.94 volts at 4.7 amp. So pretty close to the 100 watts power rating. Um, at about 94 watts of power right now. So the U-Green Nexode GAN charger, which is capable of putting out 140 watts, is now putting out about 94 watts of power to the MacBook Pro. Now, if the MacBook Pro were any lower in power in battery um, percentage right now, it should be able to draw more, but right now it's topping up at 94. Now let's do a very quick like for like comparison. This is the Apple original charger, also supposed to be putting out 140 watts. Let's switch it over and let's see how much it's putting out. Okay, it is charging now. I heard the chime. Let's see. Okay, so it negotiated 20.3 volts, sending out 4.7 amps down the line and is drawing 96 watts of power. So just two watts more than what the Nixode uh, charger is capable of putting out, all while Cinebench R23 is running here in the background. So none of these two chargers, when charging over USB-C to the USB-C port on the MacBook Pro, is capable of putting out anything more than 100 watts. So let's then use the MagSafe. Now this MagSafe is a proprietary cable from Apple and it came shipped together with the MacBook Pro as well. I'm going to be plugging into the Apple original charger. Now this should pull out 140 watts and let's click in and let's see what it's pulling. Okay, right now. Okay, now it's at 27.8 volts. So 27.8 volts should send up to 5 amps. It is now at, wow, 5.14 amp. And it is throwing out 142 watts down the line, right? So it's charging the MacBook Pro at 142 watts, okay? So we know that uh, Apple, of course, Apple makes uh, spec makes products that are spec accordingly and they live up to their specs now. What about this U-Green Nexode charger at 140? So if it supports PD 3.1 protocol, it should send 28, yep, yep. It is sending 27.9 volts down the line 
and 4 point, okay, it has reached 5.14 amps and it is sending 144 watts of power down to the MacBook Pro. So does it perform? Yes, it performs. And I think if you are wondering whether this charger lives up to its name, it does. And Ugreen usually makes product that lives up to its name. Now, I have to talk about two more things, right? One is the design of this and the next is the usability. Let's tackle uh, maybe the usability first, all right? So look at this charger right here. It is a three port charger and this charger here from Apple is a single USB-C port. Of course, more ports are better, okay? So we have a USB-A port which is capable of putting out 22.5 watts of power and two USB-C ports. One of them is capable of up to 140 watts, the other is capable of putting out up to 100 watts. So technically the A port is, uh, is quick charge 3.0 capable, QC 3.0. The 100 watts port is capable of putting out at PD 3.0 and the 140 watts port is actually PD 3.1, okay? So you do have to take note that the ports will do different things. Now, when you connect individually, 140 watts, 100 watts and 22.5 watts is the maximum. Now, what if you use two ports, both at the same time? Say you are using both the USB-C port both the USB-C port, one of them will put up 65 watts and the other will also put up 65 watts of power. So not too bad, but if you put in a USB-A port, okay, or something charging something over USB-A, then either port will be 100 watts, okay? No difference because it makes us out at 100 watts. So a very, very useful combination to have. But what if you use all three? Now, the, if you use all three, the first port will put out 65 watts, second port will put out 45 watts, and the last USB-A port will put up 22.5 watts. Now, should you need more power, then yeah, why don't you consider the Ugreen charger, all right, which I've reviewed before. This is also the next sort line of charger from Ugreen, and it goes 200 watts. Basically, it doubles the number of ports. And uh, there are four USB-C ports and two USB-A ports. And if you connect two devices, two high power devices to the first two USB-C port on that device, it actually throws out 100 watts each. So a lot more powerful, but it is more desktop based and it's not really portable because it doesn't have the plug built in. So for this particular case, if you look at the Apple charger, the plug is actually removable. This is a UK plug. And if you use a US plug where they have a two pin, it can flip in and out. It does actually maintain a very slim profile as opposed to the next sort line of charger. Now, this is the 141. You will see that it actually has a three pin plug as well. They sent me the UK version, which is the same as what we use in Singapore and Malaysia and Hong Kong, right? And if you look at it, it is actually not removable. So in terms of uh, volume, it actually takes up a little bit more volume, but you do notice that the um, Apple charger is a lot taller, although just a smidge wider, okay? But the three pins doesn't, uh, doesn't poke out as much as the U-Green charger. In terms of thickness though, the Apple is a lot slimmer, and this is quite a bit thicker. If you ask me to weigh the difference out, I think they weigh roughly the same. Maybe the Nexode charger is slightly heavier. I don't know, I don't want to pull out the scale to take a look at this. Okay, so you have understood the difference between the two chargers. I think the Nexode charger will give you a lot more flexibility. You don't have to carry multiple chargers when you're traveling. And this is actually good for powering the MacBook Pro at up to 140 watts as tested earlier. Now, the other thing that you have to take note is definitely the price. The problem with chargers is that they are not cheap and the Apple charger is 99 bucks, okay? Which is already expensive in its own right. But the list price of the Nexo 140 watt charger is $119. Now $119 being more expensive than the Apple charger is quite hard to stomach, but, but, but I have found a link on Amazon store and they are actually selling it for $89. 89 US dollars is not too bad. Now it's $10 cheaper with two more ports. 
for you to use and it is definitely a much better bike but on top of that there's actually a 15% discount as the time as of the time that I'm recording this video the 15% discount is still active I'm going to link it maybe I'll just put a QR code here if not just check out the link in the video description down below where I'll put you the affiliate link I may earn a small commission from there if you want to support the channel that's one way to do it okay and if you buy it from there 15% discount from $89 brings this to $70 odd dollars I can't remember 9, 12, 13, 46, about $73 maybe around there. Okay, so at $73, it becomes a no-brainer and this will become a pretty good charger for you to bring around on your travels as well as maybe put it in the office and throw this at home because in the office, you also sometimes need to charge your phone, your AirPods, your other devices, maybe your watch and this charger it does it all so you want to check out the 200 dollars 200 watt charger from nexode the u green uh, line of charger gen chargers do check out the link that i'm going to be linking to my video right here you can check it out and i'll see you over in that video